Hey everybody, welcome to Wednesday's Word. I'm Pastor Keith here at Zion United Methodist Church here in Myerstown, Pennsylvania. And I'm so glad that you're along with me, so thank you for watching. We've been looking here at the book of 1 John over the past few weeks, and now we're in 1 John chapter 2. And if you watched last week's video, and you saw that I mentioned that um, we're, as we're looking at a few verses here in chapter 2, we understand that the gospel of Jesus changes how we stand and how we walk. Now, that might sound a little bit confusing with you, uh, to you, but we, we, it changes our standing with God in that when we believe in Jesus, we're covered, um, that, that we are forgiven of our sins. We are uh, righteous in the eyes of God, and so our standing changes, but today we're going to look at how our walking changes changes as well. And I'm not talking about just how we physically walk, but how we uh, walk through life, how we live our lives. Okay, so um, as we get into the Word today, I just want to pose a question to you if you're, if you're watching and you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Um, the question that I get asked very frequently is, how do I know if I'm saved? How do I know if my faith in Jesus is uh, real and if it's saving faith uh, because let's face it nobody wants to get to the end of their life and stand before the judgment seat of God and proclaim faith in Jesus and hear Jesus say I never knew you you know that's something that we don't ever want to experience and so we want to have real faith saving faith what does that mean and so we're gonna look here in 1st John 2 starting in verse 3 I'm going to read through verse 6. It says this. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him also ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Okay, so just to recap, John is writing to believers in the first century who are confused because some of the people of their church who were teachers uh, of the law, teachers of the gospel, actually kind of broke away from the church and started teaching a very strange, different, distorted gospel. They started preaching something about how maybe Jesus wasn't really in the flesh, he was just a spirit being, um, or they, they would preach that maybe Jesus wasn't really truly the Son of God. And they had all these distortions of the gospel, but the bottom line was um, their lives were totally inconsistent with the ways of God, and they continued in their sin, which essentially was they just continued in their own selfish ways, in their own prideful ways, and just lived for themselves to please themselves, and they lived for their own, you know, enjoyment and glory and that kind of thing. And so the people that John is addressing here, they're wondering, you know, are they teaching us the truth, and does it really matter how we live our lives? And John is addressing this. Remember, he is writing to them so that they don't sin anymore. And we understand that when we do sin, we come to Jesus, and he forgives us of our sins when we confess them to him. But he desired for uh, uh, the people there, and he desired for us as well, that we would continue to grow in righteousness and holiness and grow in the ways of God, that we would not continue in our sinful ways. And so he starts to show how the people, the false teachers, um, their lives were inconsistent with the ways of God. And he sort of proves that they are fake. They're phony. And so in verse 3 he says, And by this we know that we have come to know him. Okay, so the question I asked in the beginning, how do you know that you're saved? One of the answers that you can give, that you know that you're saved, is this. He says, if we keep his commandments. Now the word commandment is just his, his ways, his laws. And Jesus, um, he, 
he basically gives us two laws according to John. The first law is to believe in Jesus, and the second law is to love like Jesus. Okay? And as we go through the book of 1 John, you're going to see that theme over and over again. Believing in him and loving like Jesus. And he says, those who keep, or those who adhere, those who observe and obey the commandments of Jesus, those are the ones um, who know him. And so how can we know that we know him? Well, listen, when, when you put your faith in Jesus and you know that he has died for you and that he has risen from the dead and that he forgives you of your sin because of his death and resurrection, there's something that happens that God does a work inside of you. He regenerates you. You're born again. You're born of the Spirit. And, and you begin to have new desires within your heart. You have new affections. And, and the things that, that used to occupy your time that you recognize are sinful suddenly become less and less appealing. In fact, I think one of the reasons that the cross of Jesus Christ um, is so horrific. I mean, we can't begin to imagine how horrible of a death it was for him, how shameful, how painful, just how, how much he suffered upon the cross. I don't know that we could even bear to watch it happen. It was horrible. And I think the reason that it was such a, a public display that was horrible was to show us just how horrible sin is. That the sins we commit, God doesn't take them lightly. That our sin is, is absolutely horrible in the eyes of God. And, and when we become, when we have faith in Jesus and we become born again, we begin to see sin for what it truly is. And we begin to despise it. We look at it and we say, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Those things I used to do, they disgust me now. Those things I used to say, the attitudes that I used to have, they absolutely, you know, disgust me. I don't want to have anything to do with it. And you can tell a person who is saved by, by the life that they live, that they live differently, that they care about the ways of God. They, they care to learn more. They're in the Word, and they want to know the Word, and they, and they want to apply it to their lives. And, and being born again has this... Um, effect on us. It changes our desires. It changes our, uh, our motivations on the inside. You know, a lot of the times what can happen is we, we are motivated um, to do good things so that we look good for others. Or we do good things so that we, um, we think we're going to earn something with God. We think that, that we can earn our salvation. You know, that God will owe us something do good deeds towards others or, you know, we give to charity or whatever. And, and none of that is true. Listen, Jesus is the one who has saved us. We cannot save ourselves. Our motivation is not to earn something from him or to look good for other people. Our motivation is to live a life that pleases him. We live a life that is submitted to him, okay? Because when Jesus went to the cross— what he did is he's dying upon the cross. He even says, this is paid in full. He uses that word. It is finished. It is paid in full. And so what he's saying is that he is purchasing you. He's purchased me. All who have faith in Jesus, he has bought you. Listen to what it says in 1 Corinthians. I'm going to read this. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, in verse 19 and 20, it says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. And that's not a passage that we like to 
focus on too much, to think that we were bought with a price, that we are not our own, but it's the truth. Listen, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you are not your own. You have, you've given up your rights to Jesus Christ. You belong to him. You are his bondservant, his slave. You are his property because he purchased you with his blood that he shed upon a cross. And so when we realize this, we come to faith in him. We realize what he's done for us. That he's, he has snatched us out of the, you know, the grip of death, and he's he's put us into into his presence. That he's given to us eternal life. We realize that we are not our own anymore. Our allegiance is to him. Our desire is to please him, and to do what he says. Okay. And so he in First John, that's what he is saying here in First John chapter two. He's saying that we know that we know him because we keep his commandments. He goes on to say, whoever says I know him but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Okay, and so there are people who call themselves Christians who say they believe in Jesus, but they have no desire to really follow Jesus. They have no desire to listen to what he has to say in his word and follow his word. They have no desire for holiness. They have no desire for righteousness. They don't realize that, that they belong to Jesus anymore. And, and they don't belong to Jesus. They, they don't understand this. And I believe that there are many, you know, in our, even in our churches who have kind of this faith that, that they understand with their mind the principles of the Christian faith. They might understand that Jesus died, that he was raised but they've never really placed their trust in him. They've never submitted to him fully. They've never said, Jesus, you know, I am yours completely and, and really put their trust in him. And to me, that is, that's a, a false salvation. It's not real. It's not a saving faith, okay? And so I want to urge you to, to consider this and think about what, since you've become a believer in Jesus Christ, what fruit do you see in your life? Do you see the fruit of the Spirit? Do you see that you are filled with God's love and, and joy of salvation? Do you see your desire to show people loving kindness and generosity? Or is your heart hard towards others? Do you you know, neglect the needs of others? Do you even care about what's going on in other people's lives? And when, when you come to faith in Jesus, you ought to have a complete heart change. There should be something there that just absolutely is, is new. It's supernatural. And that's what John is talking about here. Do you have a desire to follow Jesus and to follow his ways? Um, he continues on and says, whoever keeps his word in him Truly, the love of God is perfected. And I love this. This is a promise to you and me who are followers of Jesus. He's saying that when we follow Jesus, we, we have faith in him and we desire to follow him and we've submitted to him, that God is doing a work in our hearts. So you that follow Christ, understand God is doing a work in you. That it says the love of God is being perfected in your heart, within you. That God is doing this sanctifying work, this, this, this work of renewal. And yeah, we're not perfect. We do screw it up. But understand that you are being perfected by God because he loves you and you are his. You, you are his purchased possession. You are his prized possession. So he's doing this work in our hearts, perfecting his love, continuing to help us to grow in our agape love, our love for him and our love for one another. And listen, we live in a time when there is so much hatred out there. There's fighting amongst people. Um, there's people that, that hold grudges. There's bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness. And that's, none of that is from God. None of it is of God. God is all about us growing in love and obeying the ways of Jesus Christ 
And he, finally, he says, whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. And he's talking about Jesus there. How did Jesus walk? He's not talking about literally how we walk around a room. The word for walk means how do we live our lives? How do we conduct ourselves? What are our thoughts? What's your thought life? What's going on in your heart? What are your motivations? What are your desires? What are the words that you speak? Do you speak words of love and of grace? Words that build up others and edify? Or are you speaking words that cut others down and criticize? Are your motivations just selfish? Seeking your own desires, your own, you know, to your own advantage and, and your own pleasures and that sort of thing. He's saying, we who follow Jesus, who, who believe in Jesus, need to walk the same way that he walked. He walked around blessing. He walked around um, loving others and, and wanting to turn them to God. Even the Pharisees, which frustrated the heck out of Jesus, um, he, and, and he would really um, get into some serious arguments with them. But I believe his goal was to turn them to God. His goal was to soften their hearts so that eventually they would come to faith in him. Okay, so even when he uh, showed anger against those who, who came against him, he still, he walked with a way of love and a way of desiring for people to know the Lord. And that's the way that we're called to walk. And so we live in a world with all kinds of strife and fighting and, and hatred and, and what God wants is for his people to demonstrate the way that Jesus did, demonstrate the love of God. And that's a challenge in today's world. How can we be loving the way that Jesus was loving? You know, and, and listen, it doesn't mean that we just turn a blind eye to sin. Jesus never did that. You know, Jesus, when he went to the cross, he did not justify your sin. He justified you. Okay? And so Jesus never turned a blind eye to sin. But he was, he was always seeking to turn people um, to the Father, turn people to himself, to have faith in himself. And so that's what we're called to do. We're called to walk in a way that um, turns people to the Lord Jesus Christ through love. Not through, not through hatred, not through the ways of the world, but through his love. And so that is, listen, if, if you see that kind of fruit in your life, that is great assurance of your salvation. If you say you believe in Jesus and yet there's no change in your life, you need to come, get down on your knees, come to the Lord, confess your sins, and put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Lord, I admit I haven't been taking this seriously. I've been, I've been flippant about my faith. I, I, I have a head faith, but my faith has not um, gotten to the level of my heart. And, and this is the moment to do it. Like I said, we all are going to appear before the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are going to need to give an account of our lives. And so let's be sure that we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do it now. And I promise you if, you, if you come to faith in Jesus, he will do a miraculous work in your heart. He'll change you on the inside. You will never be the same. And you will live your life, as it says in 1 Corinthians uh, that I read there, that you will want to glorify him in every way, in every aspect of your life. And so that's my prayer for you today, that you would experience that uh, walk in the way that Jesus walked, and uh, I'm sure that you will be blessed, and you'll be a blessing to many. Thank you again so much for watching today, and just glad that you've been along with me, and I hope that you have a blessed rest of your week, and we'll see you back here next week.